Hi, I'm Femi OK. And I'm Molly Kabilal, and you're in the stream. Today, when is playing a sport more than just a game? We'll look at the Native American origins of lacrosse. Today is World Indigenous Peoples Day, so we're looking at the contributions of indigenous communities and individuals in sports, and specifically lacrosse. Simon Moya Smith, a former stream guest on Twitter, says, play lacrosse? Thank a native. But this next tweet from Native Opinion says, if people do know of lacrosse, they don't know that it's an indigenous traditional game, or they assume it comes from France. So we'll do our best to get to the bottom of those assumptions in today's conversation. And we want your help. You can tweet in with hashtag AJStream. The sport of lacrosse is a game that holds spiritual significance for North American indigenous athletes. To the Native American Iroquois or Haudenosaunee, lacrosse is a means of honoring the Earth's creator. 12th century indigenous Americans developed the game to sharpen their hunting skills and strengthen the mind and body. Today, Native athletes are among the sport's top players, but is enough credit given to the sport's origins? The documentary Spirit Game, Pride of a Nation, follows the 2015 Iroquois Nationals lacrosse team and their fight to be recognized as a sovereign nation in world competition. Lacrosse is an original Haudenosaunee game. We played it when this earth was covered with water. It's part of our spiritual process, as part of our ceremony. Having the opportunity to participate in the nationals organization is really a key to how we see our existence as a sovereign people in this country. Most people don't understand that there's a six mile by six mile country in the middle of upstate New York. Our populations aren't that huge, yet we have quite a few world-class lacrosse players. It's a big story that's taking place here that's beyond a contest. It's about the original people of this land. We were savages and heathens and pagans to them. They used the term terra nullis, which means void, you know, empty, empty lands. These lands were not empty. It's really about asserting our nationality through the cross, and that is the legacy that we're creating for the future. We win this thing, it's going to mean so much more as a team. As a nation, you know, this is a lot bigger than just lacrosse. It's our game, it's on our territory, and it's our time. Iroquois three, one, two, three, Iroquois! The Iroquois Nationals, we've lost many games. But we've never been defeated. To tell us more about the relationship between lacrosse and Native American culture, we have from Six Nations Reserve in Canada, Lau Thompson. He played for the Iroquois Nationals and is a professional lacrosse player for National Lacrosse League's Georgia Swarm and Major League Lacrosse's Chesapeake Bayhawks. He was named 2017's Most Valuable Player for the NLL and currently holds U.S. collegiate lacrosse records in career points and assists. I'm exhausted just explaining who he is. Hello, Lyle. <laughs> Next to him, his brother Jeremy Thompson, a professional lacrosse player for the Saskatchewan Rush. He also played for the Iroquois Nationals during the 2015 World Indoor Lacrosse Championships. In Syracuse, New York, Bill O'Brien. He's a professional lacrosse player with the New England Black Wars and is also the co-founder of Thompson Brothers Lacrosse. And in Niagara Falls, New York, Amber Hildon Hauser. She's captain of the Haudenosaunee Women's National Cross Team that recently completed abroad in the Women's Lacrosse World Cup. If you're a fan of lacrosse, you're probably going nuts right now. The cream of the crop on the stream. Welcome, guests. Really great to have you. So, this connection with lacrosse and spirituality. It's so much deeper than any other sport I've ever come across. There is an origin story that is so critical to lacrosse. Bill, tell us that story. You know, lacrosse, it was, uh, it's a game believed to be given down from the creator to the Native American people. Um, many, many years ago, even, even before the earth was formed, Oren Lyon talks about it. Um, and he talks about a game that happened between the winged animals and the grounded animals. So on the winged animals team, you had the eagle, the hawk, the bat. On the grounded animals team, you had the deer, the wolf, the bear. And they played in this epic lacrosse game. Um, at the end of the game, the, uh, the bat scored the game-winning goal. But before the game, he didn't really have a team because he's a bat. He has fur, but he has teeth. He has wings. So they weren't sure where to put him. 
the moral of the story is that everyone, no matter what you look like, no matter who you are, your strengths, your weaknesses, everyone brings something special to the game of lacrosse. And it's truly, uh, it's truly a gift. And it's to be played not only for entertainment for the creator, but also as a form of medicine for the community and to help bring joy and, uh, and peace to everyone. Amber, I see you nodding. There's so much more to lacrosse than just exercising and great pecs and muscles, right? Uh, well, like Bill was saying, that it's a gift. And um, where I come from, uh, we're still trying to grow the game uh, near Tuscarora and uh, the surrounding communities with uh, our women. So when Bill talks about it being a gift, I think about that every day that I can play the game and my nine-year-old daughter plays the game and we're always grateful. I, that's one of the, that's one of the big lessons that I tell her that every single time that she goes on to the floor, whether she's playing box lacrosse or she goes onto the field when she's playing field lacrosse, uh, to just be thankful to the creator that you get to step on that floor, get to step on that field. Mm -hmm. And so I hear what you're saying, and I heard what Bill said, but Tara here on Twitter seems to think that the general public doesn't quite have that same recognition of what this game means. Tara says it's become a sport largely associated with white, elite, East Coast colleges. It is the creator's game, though. Another person writes in, this is Amy Lynn, she says the fact that it's part of the party culture in college is a huge disrespect to the origin. The medicinal and ceremonial aspects are still very much alive in Haudenosha Haudenosaunee communities. Jeremy, can you explain what she means by it being medicinal? How is it and why is it described as a med medicine game, a game of medicine? Um. I think the biggest thing when it, you know, when a question pops up, you know, uh, the game of cross and how it's been a medicine to our people is, um, you know, everything starts in our mind. And, you know, when the creator had sent down the good word um, to always use a good mind and good frame of mind. And that was obviously, you know, introduced and intertwined with the game of cross because one of the ways that the creator had, um, you know, the way one of the ways he wanted this game to be played was with a good frame of mind to encourage the people around you. And more importantly, you know, to have fun with that. And that's one of the things that we've always been taught in our communities that has been passed down from generation to generation. Uh, you know, my father's taught me that. And then, you know, his father has taught him that. So every spring, myself, um, I'm reminded of that because of new, it's almost like that new plant life. Um, you know, the, 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 the leaves on the tree start to grow again and that, and that same in essence. And then as a lacrosse player, um, it's that same idea. Uh, I'm reminded that there's a new season coming up and to, um, you know, have a good frame of mind, go out there, give it your best and have a good season. And along with that, you know, encourage the people along with you and more importantly, to have fun with it. La, I'm just wondering what happened to lacrosse over history where it, it kind of left Native American Indians in terms of ownership and then became a posh game, an elite game. How did that happen? Um, I mean, um, the, the way I see it, 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 it's never left us. We, mm. We've always played this game, and, and um, the way I see it is, you know, whether this game became, a, you know, what it is today, um, and a college game, a high school game, um, you know, whether or not that all happened, we'd still be playing this game. Mm. Um, and I think, um, you know, when you when you look at the history of the game, where it comes from is is, you know, it, it started with us and um, us using the game one as medicine, but um, you know other communities use this game as as a way to settle war disputes. But uh, carrying on, um, you know, it became it's it's becoming it's a growing game. It's becoming a we're hoping it becomes a mainstream sport, and we're watching it grow. Um, like that comment on Twitter that it's, it's um, you know East Coast white, white sport. Um, I think that, that that it was that way at one point, and I think it's it's now changing. Um, mm. I think a lot of people are getting into the game, mm. and the game's growing not only in in America but all around the world. And, and mm. 
That's Lyle, part here's of someone on Facebook who, who would agree with you, Lyle. This is Tia. She says, I've watched and cheered for Native players my whole life. And I think as long as we continue to play lacrosse, it will never be, quote unquote, whitewashed. And we aren't going anywhere. So uh, since we've, we've made that clear, we've established that no one's going anywhere. Let's talk about the actual game. We got this tweet from Alan who says, how does it feel being regarded as one of the best ever to play lacrosse? Possibly the best. And do you agree with that claim? Lyle, do you agree? And Jeremy, do you have your own thoughts about that? Um, I mean, uh, it, it, it's, it's hard to kind of compare yourself. <laughs> Bill's doing a thumbs up, so he agrees. <laughs> I definitely hard agree. Ask somebody, are you really as great as people say? <laughs> yes, he is. I have to defend him, so I know how good he actually is. All right, let me show you something here. It says, from Like a Pro on Twitter, congrats to Lowell for Thompson on being named NLL MVP. And then here he is here. Okay, well, congrats to you. I want to show you a little clip from Spirit Game Pride of a Nation. It shows all of the Thompson brothers playing together and also tells us a little bit of what's happening behind the scenes and connecting spirituality to the game. Have a look. You know, me and my brothers, we all describe each other as different animals to bring a part of, you know, the original story of the game between the animals. The medicine game, the original medicine game, the first game that was ever played, it was before humans were ever on Earth, and it was played by the winged animals against the land animals. Each animal has an attribute that makes them a good lacrosse player. They refer to my brother Lyle as the hawk or the eagle because he can see the floor really well. Miles, he's a bear. He's big, he's not fast, but he uses his body the right way. Got good hands. Bears, they can catch salmon out of a creek. My brother Hyena is considered the wolf because he plays well with a pack with his brothers. Jeremy, he's the deer, he's our leader. And in our culture, the deer is the leader of all the animals. He takes charge of the team, put the team in a certain direction and let them follow him. You know, the more you come together as a team, the better you are gonna play as a team. Amber, tradition is so important in lacrosse, but there's no word of women in this tradition. But you play. Here's a picture of you, number 22, playing. Uh, there, there's tension. I know there's tension. Let's go there. Tell me about the tension between women's lacrosse and men's lacrosse. Well, uh, traditionally, women are not supposed to play. Uh, I have heard of many reasons why. Uh, from uh, it makes the creator upset um, all the way to it makes the women barren. Um, I think that when you look at a traditional medicine game, the game that our women play uh, is not the same game. Well, we don't um, we don't burn tobacco before our games. Uh, we don't play for medicine. Uh, but we do hold uh, the game and the sport of lacrosse very close to our heart. And um, I would say that we play with just as the, 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 same, the same good mind and the same intentions that the men play with. So, yes, there, there is tension. Um, what have people said to I you, think... Amber, about you playing? What have they said to you? <sighs> Um, just that, you know, that women shouldn't play and that, you know, we're making the creator upset and sad that women are playing. But I think that... There's more than the... that, though, Amber, because there have been death threats <laughs> as well. I don't know any women players who've had death threats for playing a sport. Let's go there, Amber, because yeah. otherwise <laughs> uh, it, it's important. It's important to talk about. Uh, you know, I think it's, it is important to talk about, but I think that looking at the bigger picture and that our 16 women, female Haudenosaunee athletes that just were able to go to England on our passport is a much bigger issue. Mm. And we need to push past um, what has been in the past to move forward. And our talent pool is small, uh, but we're growing. Uh, back in 2006, I think only three or four of us that played on that U19 team were either playing in college or had just finished college. And, and now, mm, for the most part, all of our girls are Division I commits and or have played Division I lacrosse. So I think when you go back and talk about the issue of women not being able to play lacrosse, um, 
we look we look past that because mm. because we have to as women because we have faced so much adversity and our hearts and our passion are so much bigger than that 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 we just move past it. Mm. You know I, what I found striking about what you said, Amber, is that you said it's not the same game, but. Um, what people online are telling us is that you do face some of the same challenges, the men and the women. And one of those is the one that you mentioned. This is Amy Lynn tweeting in uh, about the women's national lacrosse team going to the World Cup and their struggle for passport recognition, uh, having authorities outside um, of, of the Iroquois nation accepting them into those countries. Amy Lynn says that recognition was the greatest victory at the games. We also got a video comment from someone who thought similarly thought that was a really big deal. This is a video comment from Terry. Have a listen to what she told us. Getting to see them break those cultural barriers is amazing, and it's made me realize just how important and special lacrosse can be and made me appreciate it even more. Watching them play in the Women's World Cup was an amazing moment, and it felt so right that they were there because as the people who created the game of lacrosse, they played alongside others who'd had the opportunity to pick it up and enjoy it just alongside them. So they're very inspiring, and it's made me really, really love the game even more. So I'm very thankful for them. So Amber, what do you make of that support? Um, I'm usually not an emotional person, but um, that means a lot. Thank you, Terry, because our our women our executive board um we we worked very hard and when the uh 2015 team wasn't allowed to go to Scotland and we had to tell our players um that we weren't allowed in um with our passports um that was extremely heartbreaking so once we were able to get on the plane to go to England, that in and of itself was a victory. And to have other people uh, that aren't Haudenosaunee recognize that struggle and that adversity and and watch us play, I, I mean, that that is so inspiring. So Bill, this concept of having a passport as an Iroquois nation. This is so important. It's actually impacted uh, world championships that the Iroquois players have said, we're, we're not going to this championship unless we can get on the plane with our passport. Can you tell our general audience what this passport is, why it means so much, and, and why players are saying, we, we're not playing internationally without us being able to use our own passport? Definitely. So, I mean, when it comes down to the Haudenosaunee passport, it's really a matter of sovereignty. The, the issues that surround it is uh, they go back as far as when uh, the first settlers came here and, and removed Native from their land. Um, and then Native Americans had to fight in order to get that land back or that sovereignty. Um, so having a passport, a Haudenosaunee passport, represents sovereignty. Now, once um, a world-class player like Lyle or, or Jeremy go out and get a U.S. passport, it takes away or it chips away at the sovereignty that they can have by being part of the Iroquois nation, where, uh, which is very important because you'll see some places uh, nations are losing sovereignty more and more, and it doesn't seem like a, a real big issue. But at, at the end of the day, at one point, there may not be um, sovereign native land anymore. But in Onondaga, which is a very traditional community, uh, hopes to hold that intact. And Lyle and Jeremy can talk to why they why they have Haudenosaunee passports and why the traditions are so mm. important. Go ahead, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, for us, it's um, you know obviously it's it's something we've been fighting um, since I guess two world, eight years ago when the team the team went to was trying to go to England and the passports were denied. And it's still it's still uh, something we're we're going through a process with because, um, you know, we we updated our passports, did whatever whatever needed to be done to mm -hmm. so that we can we can travel on our own passports and we can uh, be accepted as as our own sovereign nation. Um, we've done the done the work for the passports and um, that that's what we're looking to do. That's what mm -hmm. that's what we wanna we wanna be able to to travel on our passports and and um you know we're we're playing in 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 world games against US, Canada, England, 
um, Australia, all these other countries. And, um, you know, for me, I don't think it'd be right if, if we're our own separate team, but at the same time, oh. um, we're, we're classified as, as, you know, maybe U S citizens or Canadian yeah. citizens. I think it's, um, well, I think, I think it's a definitely, uh, a most, I think it's a real good, important topic um, because it's it's something that our people, as Native Americans, as Indigenous people, and all Indigenous people across the country, across the world, um, it's been something that we've been fighting for right from the beginning of time when um, you know colonialism hit these lands, our our, our lands over here in uh, North America, and it, it's you know our everything's been passed down, you know history's been said there, you know history's been um you know told on our side and, and and their side as well and and it just comes down to basically um you know us sticking our grounds and sticking our ground and believing and having pride in um what our our ancestors has has stood up for and what they've gone through uh through mm-hmm. you know horrible times and good times as well and i think that's important uh for us to stick our ground and to find you know you know for us to travel on our own passports um being able to play the game of lacrosse it's something that we grew right. up um, loving and that's important to our people culturally and as a sport one of the things i've noticed about it... you um as as a group um and as players is it's not enough to just play you also are so aware that you're role models and you go out and help other youngsters and invite them into the game let me show people this this is uh uh, Georgia Swarm Lacrosse, Thompson Brothers Lacrosse Camp. Now, you've missed this lacrosse camp, but there are many other opportunities to go to other lacrosse camps. Bill, why is this important? Why is this part of what you feel you need to do for the sport? Um, I think it just goes back to what, you know, Miles, Lau, Heine, and Jeremy really wanted to do when they set out. Having a platform as big as, as we have as a unit, um, it really gives a way to blaze a path and show kids that, hey, you can go off to school, you can create, you can get an education, you can create a future for yourself, and you can bring that back to your reservation, and you can enhance everyone around you and make for um, a better future for everyone around you. Because at one point, um, people were scared. Native Americans were scared to go off the reservation and get an education. I don't want to speak for all indigenous communities, but at least in Onondaga, kids, uh, kids would much rather at 18 go get a job start working, uh, start a family, as opposed to leave the reservation and go to school. And I think guys like Brett Bucktooth, Neil Paulus, Jeremy Thompson, um, and what Miles and Lyle have done, you know, by going off to Albany, showing kids that, hey, you can be really successful. You can remain traditional in your aspects and your beliefs, and you can come back and you can, you can give back and you can be a role model. And it's really inspiring to see and be a part of for sure. And so part of uh, inspiring is making sure that younger generations see what you all are doing. We got this from Amy Lazor, and she says, when my daughters discovered the game of lacrosse, they transform. So we're almost out of time here, Amber, but I know that you are uh, uh, encouraging this in your own daughter. Absolutely. Uh, My daughter has uh, played since she was, uh, since she could walk. Uh, And as soon as she was three, uh, we put her into box lacrosse in Canada. Uh, oh yeah, there she is, uh, my little princess. Uh, she's now a girls' field goalie uh, out of Rochester with the Monster Elite program, and sometimes she plays for the Aquasasni Attack as well. So uh, I think it's it's very important, just like Amy said, the last picture um, that my daughter Jordan was in was with her daughter Gianna and they're they're good friends and just like Amy said when Jordan's on the field Mm -hmm. when she has a lacrosse game coming up she she does she transforms uh into a a more responsible person Uh, oh okay yeah (laughs) all all parents are going to be signing up for lacrosse Amber (laughs) Bill Lau Jeremy we're not done with you yet we're going to continue our conversation at aljazeera.com slash the stream but before we go there I want to take a look at what we're covering next week on the stream. Don't miss it. Check it out. In August, we marked the 70th anniversary of the 1947 partition of India with a full week of special shows on the stream. And we want to feature your stories. If you have a family member with experiences from partition, we want to hear from you. Share your family story with us by uploading a short video to our website at stream.aljazeera.com slash join, or tweet us your family photos using the hashtag partition at 70. We'll feature them in our coverage. And join us for our week of shows, the theme of our coverage, Living Partition, starting on August 14th. See you then.
Hello again. We're talking about Native Americans and the sport of lacrosse. So let's get right back to that conversation via Malika. And Twitter. This is Curtis, and uh, um, I'll give this to you, Lyle and Jeremy. Uh, Curtis wants to know, who was your role model growing up? And so for those who don't know, of course, you come from a family of, of, of brothers, and you guys all play. I'm pulling up your Instagram page here, the family Instagram page, Thompson Brothers Lacrosse. And I know you're also streaming today's show live on Instagram for your viewers and your followers. Uh, you you guys now are likely inspiring a generation of people to look at you as role models, but did you have role models when you were starting out? Um, for sure. Uh, me, I think my most important uh, role models were my dad and my brothers uh, because those are the people that I surrounded myself around and, and what my family, my, my parents had, um, you know, kind of showed us. Um, one of the biggest things um, that I took from my dad and kind of learned from him now and now that I have children is... Um, the best time, the best thing you can do to give to kids is your time, uh, because that time spent with that child or your child, uh, you can never take that away. And you know, kind of, kind of being older now, you know, for me, you know, so it's always been my dad because um, you know I spent so much time with him and got to see him play lacrosse, you know, throughout his career, and then you know just playing right alongside my brothers, um, you know. Whenever we went summers, um, whenever somebody else had a tournament, we'd all go. And I think, you know, that time spent with them, we learned a lot about each other. Um, but growing up, as I got older into my teens, um, I had, um, you know, other lacrosse players I kind of looked up to in my, my dad's career, that, on my dad's team. And it was um, Mike Benedict uh, Jr., uh, Owen Benedict. Uh, those guys are from Akwesasne. They played for the Akwesasne Thunder, which my dad played on. They won a couple uh, President's Cup champions, Canadian championships. Mm. in uh, 97 and 92 and um you know it was just a, it was just an important important years for me because um I was coming up you know as a teen and you know I obviously had goals um as a youngster growing up uh, to be a professional lacrosse player um you know sooner sooner down the road the long down the road and I think just being around that and having my dad you know having us around that was important because of um um you know having that time spent with him and you know kind of seeing those players um, you know, evolve and play, and it kind of just inspired me, um, you know, to be the best I could be and uh, just look up and do into my career. Jeremy, I know you're a lovely brother, but l have a look at this. Uh, congrats to Lau for Thompson. All right. Then how cool is this? Lau for Thompson, lacrosse player, 250 Lau Thompson, uh, showing the love here. And a a bubble-headed doll. He has this as well. Tell us about your brother, the things that he's not that good at. Because right now he's getting a lot of adulation. I feel like we should look, you should just flatten the uh, lacrosse playing field here just a little I bit, think, even it out. Think, what is he uh, not good at? I, I think one of the things that I can give credit to, um, you know, I can't speak for him, but uh, yeah. one of the things that I've seen is that, you know, I give a lot of credit to my parents and how they brought us up as a family. Right. And I think more importantly, Lyle is, um, you know, he's a good father, um, a good, uh, good husband and a good family man, you know, it's always a work and effort when it comes to those kind of things. And to me, um, it's all about what he does off the field that makes him a good player. I, and I believe that's kind of what I've kind of come through. Such a lovely, a loyal brother. I, I, tried to, <laughs> I tried to get some dirt dish in the post show. It's like, we're on the, we're on the internet, it's okay. It's the space for dishing dirt. Uh, again, uh, uh, right, Bill, just looking at, at this uh, bobble-headed doll. Does this mean success here? Once you've got a bobble-headed doll, does this mean mainstream? Yeah, I think, I think that's fair to say. You know, once someone gets it, it's, it's almost an action figure. So a bobble-headed doll is pretty big stuff. And uh, right. he, he deserves it with the time and energy he puts in. You know, the one thing he's, he's not good at, which you asked Jeremy, is... Yeah is being average, the kids uh, above oh, average. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's crushing it. I'm not sure there's space for his head in that two shot, but we're cramming it in. Malika, what do you That's have? why it's a, uh, a bobblehead and not an action figure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll end with this comment that we got via Facebook. This is Tia. She says, lacrosse helps heal people in many ways. It's an outlet, it's a release, and it's an escape from the day to day. It's easy to understand why so many people claim it as their game. So Amber and Lau and Jeremy and Bill, thank you so much for telling us the world more about the sport of lacrosse and its Native American origins. We really appreciate it and continued success in your lacrosse careers. Take care, everybody.